Hello, my name is Nephi Wolf, and I'm with NCSI. And uh, I would like to show you a web script that can be used uh, to do round-robin assignments and, uh, and walk you through how that can be configured. Uh, just to give you a quick example, um, as we change the teams to, uh, that's not a team, so we change the team to different teams here. Let's make sure there's some people in it. Okay, so we have some different people. So we can save this incident, and then when we refresh, we can notice that uh, it automatically assigns it to the next available person. And uh, this script was originally written by uh, David B. on the community, and I'll put a link to uh, his post and, and what he put there. And, uh, and Wes McNabb from NCSI has also helped me to work on this, and uh, we've come up with this script. Um, so what happens is that uh, we, we have some new fields on the user. Uh, we create some new fields so that we can, um, we can exclude the user. And we can also track the, the round robin assign date, the last time that they were assigned. And so um, <coughs> whenever, uh, whenever the team is, is changed, if you leave the owner blank, then it will automatically round robin through those users that are in that team and assign it to the person with the oldest round robin assigned date. Um, let's walk you through uh, the steps that we do to, uh, to create that. So as I mentioned, uh, we created two new fields on the contact object, it's the FRS composite contract contact object. We added a, a date time field, uh, and, and it specifically has the incident name in it, last round robin incident assigned date. Um, I put that in there because uh, you can duplicate this again with service requests, with tasks, with other objects. So you could apply the round robin to other objects. And you probably don't want to use a reuse the round robin assign date because um, you want to get the oldest, the, the person that's been assigned the oldest service request to, to get the next service request um, and not be looking at incidents and service requests and tasks and things. Um, so it's the last round robin incident assignment date. And then you have an out of office Boolean, a checkbox, so that if the user's out of the office, you can check that and it will skip them, it won't assign it to them while they're not in. Uh, so that the user is not waiting for their incident. Uh, so we add these two new fields here, and then once we've added those fields, uh, then I've gone ahead and I've added them to the form uh, profile. Of, uh, that's the, the form used uh, in my layout for administrator, but you may be using a different form. So I added those to the form here so that you can then see when the last time that it was assigned, and you can set that out of office. And then this one here, um, I just also, uh, there, there's the label there for the last incidents round robin. And then it's just showing, uh, not the label, but the value expression is just showing the date. So that's just the value there. So we add that to the form. And once that's on the form, uh, then the next step is that we need the script. And this script will be uh, in the, and the, the video here, uh, there, there'll be the, the documentation there. So we create a new script. And again, for this script, because we can duplicate this for incidents and service requests and tasks, so I made sure to put round robin incident on there. And we can come in and we'll create it up here. You can just do a new integration. And then uh, we'll just give it a name on the first tab. And then on this screen, uh, you can leave all of these fields blank. And then over here is where we would put the script, and you can click on this button to maximize it. Um, and here's the script here. A few things to note, um, as you're, uh, if you decide to copy this for other objects, uh, the object type up here, uh, you'll just want to change that. So you can change that to service rec. And then there's a line here that's debugging. It just, it just logs information. So the service rec, so you can put in service rec number, and then uh, it's it's looking at the service request, the current service request, and so you just put in the service rec number here. That's that's the field for the service request, which tells you what the service rec number is. Um, so you'd want to update that. Um, let's see. You also want to update these fields. It's going to 
the script is going to look at the team that was assigned um, and then it's going to loop through the users and it's going to look at the users and, and in this case it's going to look at the users last round robin incident assignment date to see who's got the oldest one and so if you're doing this for requests you'll just want to update it there um, so that it reads the request date field um, and then down here you'll also want to update that same field because it then puts the, the current time in that field as they as that one user is getting assigned it updates their last their last assignment date there so you'll want to make sure that you update that also um, so those are a few places that you'll want to update this script if you're changing it um, for other objects and then also um, if you just decide to create a different field name um, if you don't decide not to call it round robin incident assignment date then you'll want to update it there um, so so you create the script we have the script here we just next next and and save that and once we create the script uh, we need to run the script we need to uh, create a so we come over here to the incident object that we're working on and first we'll need a quick action so I just uh, created a new quick action and when you create the quick action it's just a web script it's quite simple and I just choose which which one and that's just the script that I created in the, in the previous step round robin incident one so and, and then you will also want to make sure that you automatically save changes because uh, it'll run the round robin and it'll save the, the new user so we create the, the script or the, the quick action here and then finally we'll come back here and on the incident object we'll go to the business rules and we'll create a new business rule for the round robin and round robin incidents so here we'll say whenever the owner team whenever the team is changed you know whenever you change a team here uh, then we'll run this uh, it doesn't matter what it's changed to we don't care what it's changed to just whenever you change the team but we don't always want to run it we only want to run this if there's no owner so if they change the team if they if they change it to a new user we don't want to round robin because you got the owner there so we don't want to round robin that so uh, so we put in this this condition here so that we don't run this we don't round robin if the owner is blank or null and then we just go through the steps here we just we use an existing action and the round robin instance action and there's a script and you and you save it and, and that's it so now we have this business rule and and I, I apologize this is a, a triggered business rule uh, so that whenever the team is changed then it will update the the user so again let's uh, let's take a look at this we'll just do this one more time here in the front end and we'll kind of show you some more information with that so let's see accounting yeah it's got a bunch of users so as we go to accounting then it, it, it runs the round robin and unfortunately it doesn't refresh the screen automatically but uh, if you do refresh then then there it is there and so we can come over here and look at the employees that's Bo R Heath so if we look for Bo oops Bo R Heath there we go so then we can see that his last round robin last incident round robin was right now so you can uh, you can see that for the users there and another piece of information um, in the script to go back and look at this script in the script there's uh, several different places throughout the script where it will have these console debug and this just puts information into the log so that if you're wondering why it didn't assign it to a particular user or something you can look at that and uh, so these console debug lines they just output to the log and the way that you can use that um, if you come down here to the bottom and expand the application logs you can go to the, the service log here and uh, the, you'll, <coughs> you'll probably have a lot of information in there um, so what you can do is you can filter the client IP address and just put in script and script that's that's when it runs one of these web scripts so I ran one a little while ago and there's the one from just now that, that we ran so 
Um, so you can then go through and you can see the console output, and it's just outputting those lines there. And uh, so you can you can use this script. You you can copy this script, the web script, and just change the object uh, to the different to tasks, to changes, service requests, other objects, and you can uh, you can duplicate this. And uh, hopefully you'll find this useful. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, let us know, and we'd be glad to help you out. <laughs>